So after 196 minutes of rugby, it's all coming down to the final of the Saflin men's seven over the next 14 minutes. Either Kenya or the SA Select side will be crowned champions of the 2017 Saflin Sevens taking place right here in Swakop. We saw these teams in action earlier today. On that occasion, the SA Select side picking up a very, very narrow win. Kenya will still be hurting from that and they will be looking to set matters straight to show why they are a team that plays on the World 7 Series and why this SA Select side is not able to match up with them. Of course, in the SA Select team, there is Cornell Hendricks adding a little bit of experience and a lot of speed and, and, and strength as well. But Kenya will be looking to set the record straight and to claim the trophy that last year eluded them. Last year they were defeated by the South African 7th team in the final, but now an opportunity for them to set that straight. These is, this is how the two teams will line up. Nelson Oyo in the number 9 jersey for Kenya has been quite exceptional. And as we look at the SA Select side, Cornell Hendricks there, the standout player. With me today for this final two legends of the game of rugby, Paul Biozo as well as Kennedy Timber. Just as we see the whistle to get us underway, it's going to be a great encounter this one, and it is Nazim Wood with a nice light, long high hanging restart into the hands of Sam Olyich. Kenya managing to secure possession. Opportunity here for Kenya immediately as William Ambaka takes on the defense. He's brought to ground. But the penalty goes the way of Kenya. Quickly taken, but the referee says uh, you have to take it in the right manner. I think Eden Aguero, the culprit there, but still an opportunity for Kenya. Yes, Aguero looking to try to speed up the game. But that was a good kick by Woods really high hanging kick and that put test on um, on the Kenyan side nice little inside all flowed into the hands of Sam Olyich again as he makes his way into the half of the SA select side this is a promising start for the Kenyan team as they try to break through this SA select defense still available for the Kenyan side as the ball pops loose it goes into the hands of Okwacha then away to Dan Sakuta Deciding to use the man on his outside, Eden Aguero. Picked up at the back by Jeff Okwacha into the hands of Brian Tanga. And he makes, manages to make his way past the first defender. He's just got one to beat, but that's a good last-minute tackle. I think it was Woods making that last-minute tackle, but Nelson Oyo now keeping the ball alive. Goes into the hands of Eden Aguero. Running straight towards the referee. Thought he might spot a little bit of a gap there, but it closed down quite quickly. Now it's available for Okwacha as he takes on the defense and he gets through the half gap before he's brought to ground. It's still available for Kenya as the ball goes to Ombasa. He's got a gear on his outside, decides not to use him. Still available for Kenya as they remain on the attack, but the SA select side is still managing to hold on in the defense and the penalty going against the SA select side, taken quickly by Kenya as William Mbaka takes the ball forward, tries to get away on the outside. And now it's a little bit scrappy from the Kenyans as the SA Select side pushes up very, very quickly. And another penalty going against the SA Select side. I think that's about four in a row. And the SA team need to be careful here. Yeah, they really need to be because there's big time pressure on the the select side, the Kenyans are getting good ball movement and offloading in the tackle. As they look to tap to get it moving. Now an opportunity for Kenya as the break is made by Sam Olyich. Gets the pass away on the inside to Okwacha, but he's not able to hold on. As they select players calling for a knock on there. And, uh, the referee will have to see what his call is. And... Uh, Oh, he seems to agree with the SA Select players. I think uh, they might have helped him out with the... Uh, I think it is the right call. Yeah, Woods was very clear. 
very clear that uh, ref there was a knock on there as there was a um, a quick blood replacement there just an indication of how physical this game is SA select side now in dangerous territory as they try to run the ball from inside their in goal area well, that's good defense there good pressure being able to get the turnover because the SA select select side try to get the ball out wide but just caught behind the trial and then Kenyans are going to look to put pressure here Look, it's been Kenya. All, it's, been, it's been all Kenya this, this, throughout this first half. So surely he's going to score now. That's Sam Oliet, and he's going to make it look easy. A great scrum setting up that try for Kenya. And with two and a half minutes left in this first half, the deadlock has been broken. And Kenya deserving that try. They've been on the attack for most of this game, as you said, and Paul. And finally, they get their reward. Look, the one thing about defense in seven is that it's tiring because if you spend if you spend three and a half three and a half minutes four minutes defense doing defense you are but the damn will break at some stage yeah the defense opened up here they really didn't cover that that space between the ruck and the first defender and you can't really be leaving that space up especially if you've defended so well just to hold up the, the Kenyan side for most of this first half. Kenya will also remember that they were in the lead for most of that game against the SA Select side in the pool stages earlier on today. So they'll want to try and open up a, a comfortable lead. Yeah, the ball available for the SA Select side, but the referee saying that we need to play the scrum. We score the final, but maybe not from Plaasen. And there's Cornell Hendricks again. He really has been influential for this SA Select side, and it's just wonderful to see him back on the on the rugby field. Yeah, they just haven't got enough ball yet in this first half for those deadly strike runners that they have to get going. But let's hope hope they get some ball in this occasion. Woods has got to get involved in the game, and he does. Oh, the pass not going to hand. Just as I say so, he then goes and throws a speculative pass that ends off in touchline. You put the muggers in the make, any? Yeah, it's a bit difficult. But he's a he's a neat little player. I've been impressed with him, uh, his effort this uh, tournament. Yeah, yeah, look, he's a great player. Blessed with pace, but the skills to play the game. I'm sure he's got a great future ahead of him. Excellent line out by the Kenyan side. And now another opportunity for them to get the ball through the hands as it goes to Eric Mbasa. So they remain on the attack. There's a try scorer, Oliet, picking up the ball. Needs to find support. He does find it on his inside in the form of Jeff Okwacha. Players available on this right hand side for Kenya. If they can get the ball through the hands on to Ombasa, it goes. And then the little speedster, Nelson Oyo, not able to get around his defender on that occasion. But still, it's Kenya deep inside the half of the SA Select side. They'll be looking to end off this first half with another try. Oliet, a long pass wide into the hands of William Mbaka it goes. And the second score for Kenya, a crucial score just before the halftime break to take their tally to 10 with the potential of making a 12 with the conversion to come. Well, Mbaka just showing that it's a numbers game. Kenya made sure that they've got the numbers out wide and they've that's good play. That's a well worked try there. Yeah, excellent try there with the Kenyans. Also, all deserve a lead. I mean, this whole half has been played in the, in the SA Select side of the field. You can really imagine the SA Select side's coach, his message was pretty clear boys, let's get the ball in our hands. Let's start playing our game, the game that we can play. Because when they have the ball in hand, as they showed in the previous encounter between these two sides, they can actually be very devastating. Okay. 
Why do you want to Let's keep it simple. As much as possible. So, how, how are we going to win the game? Position. Possession. Okay, simple. Restart to keep attacking. Recycle the ball. Don't force it. And in defence, fantastic. Just make sure we don't shoot out the line. We're patient again. Force them into an error. Okay, they'll tire now if you keep the ball. Okay, yep. let's go. My Buddha. He's alright. He's a good space to figure out. But if you are slow, yeah, he's uh, been an impressive addition to this tournament. And I, I, I think, you know, we, as we do tournaments around Africa, to get, you know, the caliber of Cornell Hendricks, you know, gracing your tournaments is, is so crucial because, you know, all the young players aspiring to, to play up there, just rubbing shoulders and even just getting a, a little chat or a little selfie with them is uh, very encouraging for the growth of the game. There's two boys on the uh, Namibia Academy side who um, had a big go at him yesterday during the game. Two big hits. I'm sure they'll tell their friends about it. <laughs> well, Kennedy's just reminded me I still need to go and take my selfie with Cornell Hendricks, but it all comes down to the final seven minutes of the 2017 Saflin Sevens. Are the SA Select side able to fight their way back into this game, or will it be Kenya? who are crowned victors here in Swakopmund. The ball taken into contact by Ruan Mostert and secured by Cornell Hendricks at the back. It's picked up now by Conroy Ayman. And a nice little break hit by Johnson. And Johnson is on his way to the try line. He's going to stop, be stopped five meters short. It's still the SA Select side to remain on the attack. They awarded a penalty as well. Taken quickly by Angus van Niekerk. He gets it away to Wood. And then it will be Cornell Hendricks with the first points for the SA Select side. And that's what the game needed. It's seven points in it now with the conversion to come. And it's game on. Look, it definitely is game on. You know, it's almost like a game of two halves. The first half, SA Select didn't see a ball not even once. And now in the start of the second half, it's been, it's been, SA, Select all over, it's been SA Select all over Kenya. Yeah, the talisman and the man of the tournament obviously had to go in, in the final and it's quite fitting but a tough call on the kenyans because they counteract at that ball and obviously when you do counteract you're gonna end up off your feet you know it's a tough call as woods looks to add the extra two and he's obviously aiming the ball to our cameraman that's up in the yeah look sometimes it's kind of a good for you Sometimes, okay. Sometimes it's kind of go for you, and I felt, I felt the hard done as well. Not kind of right. Yeah, because I mean, the ref has, has to understand once you've blown over that ruck, there's nobody to keep you up on your feet, and you end up on the ground. So it's a, it's just rather contentious. But against the law, it's it's probably right. A deep restart that from the ESA select side, but Kenya. Showing what they can do with ball in hand yet again as Sam Muregi takes the ball forward now into the hands of Aguero again it goes and then to Olejic back into the hands of Olejic now a good little loop around he's got Aguero on his inside if he decides to use him decides to take on the defense rather himself and now Aguero picks it up at the back plenty numbers here for Kenya as Eric Ombasa needs to juggle or rather juggle the ball with his feet. Now it's Sam Muregi. Kenya doing well to keep ball in hand here. Again, just starving the SA Select side of from ball. And now it's a break from Sam Muregi again. And this will be an easy run in for Sam Muregi. And the conversion should be an easy one as well. As Kenya make it. Well, just when they put the ball down, they make it 17-5 now with the conversion to come. And the Kenyan coach, a much happier man right now. Yeah, and that's, um, you know, after talking it up, the SA Select side slipped one or two tackles. And the Kenyan side like this is going to punish you. They were able to add the extra two there quickly. As SA Select side needs to be the next team to score for this match to be on. This is just strong power, explosive power out the foot. 
And look at that running action. That's an athlete right there. As he buys time, the ref is always so encouraging him to put the ball down. Oh, that was a close kick. Yeah, Charles Amondi doing his best to convince the, the ref that it went over the 10-meter line. But it will be a free kick for the SA Select side. Good little break by Ayman again. But the penalty going against the SA Select team for holding on at the breakdown. And now Kenya can just run down the last two and a half minutes on this clock. And that's also a sign of a good a good team that if they are able to deliver the goods when it mattered most they didn't come out on top in the final pool game but in the final they have turned it up and they have been very very impressive in this game yep there's a saying that says if you don't succeed the first time try the second time and the kenya are rolling in this second game they've been accurate and they've contested at every ruck you know looking at angus vanico here who's been a key playmaker for the SS Select side most of this tournament has hardly had the, the, the ball in his hand to be able to be influential. And that's just indicative of the pressure that the Kenyan side have put on. Two converted tries for the SA Select side. We'll see them draw level, but they'll have to score it quickly. Time is running out. First have to try and get their hands on the ball though, and Kenya making it very difficult for them at the moment. A good inside pass into the hands of Eden Aguero. It's available at the back, picked up by Oliet. He gets it wide now into the hands of William Mbaka, taking on the defense on the outside. Be gets past the first defender, and then past the second, but the pass not able to be held on to. And a chance for Kenya goes a begging. Yeah, there was a slight knock on, but just looking at the physique of William Mbaka, you know, you've got to imagine Angus Van Niekirk having to line up and try to stop a, a unit of that size. Fifty seconds left on the clock for the SA Select side to try and steal, a, at least force the game into extra time here. Yeah, they managed to get the ball wide. Good little goose step shown by Dion Talyard. And with the scrum being awarded, it should be enough for Kenya to seal the win as the clock hits 25 seconds to go. And it would be a well-deserved victory because Kenya have shown excellence in execution and they've been precise and, and very accurate. Whenever a turnover was on the taking, they took it. And when a try was up for the taking, they surely sealed it. And with five seconds left, They've obviously sealed this game. Would like to see the SA side finish off in a high. It'll be good for the crowd as well to give them a last little bit of something to support. Penalty going the way of the SA select side. A good little break by Van Squid. But then the pass not able to go to hand. And Kenya now with an opportunity to just kick the ball out. But instead they hold on to it on the, at the breakdown. Taken quickly by Angus van Niekerk. Couple of players over on the left-hand side. It's Ruan Mostert making the break. And Ruan Mostert will have the final say in this final. It's not going to be enough for him to win his, the game for his side. But it's a great way for Ruan Mostert to end this game. It's Kenya who will be victorious. Oh. Mommy Mustard looking like with this bandaging from the bloody face and he's been a strong run and scored a lot of tries as the two points is added and Kenya have won this final in convincing style and playing some good rugby. Yeah, great confidence booster for Kenya going into the Sevens yeah. World Series that gets underway in next month in Dubai. They use this opportunity to play here in Swakopmund to get some structures in place, to try out a few new players, to try out a few new combinations. 
but ultimately it's mission accomplished as they are crowned victors of the 2017 Saffron Sevens. Credit must go to the SA Select side in the end, falling only seven points short. And if you look at the SA Select side, made up of a number of players who aren't quite seen as professional players, most of them, but really they have done very, very well to match up against a strong Kenyan side. Yeah. With the understanding that uh, the Blitzbocker coach Neil Powell is been keeping a close eye on this FA Select team, there's been some good performances, and I think there's been some encouraging performances, you know, by the side that's coached by Bobby Hubert. But the Kenyan side will be very confident heading into the the World Rugby Series. Well done. Okay, from, the, from that first game against them, to be able to learn from the errors in a short amount of time and then come back uh, and win the game. But not just win it, win it in really convincing fashion. Fantastic. Okay, lots to work on. Remember, Dubai is our aim three weeks' time. We've got to work, we've got to keep improving. This is now the benchmark. Okay, we've got to keep improving as we go throughout the season. Okay, but a yeah, fantastic you two as well coming in as well. Young boys in a final brilliant stuff. Okay, for all of you, thank you for your efforts. Top effort this weekend. Well done. Good one. It's for me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Great oh, words oh, there by the Kenyan coach saying that they learned from their mistakes in that final group game and they were able to fix things very, very quickly in the final and they did it when it mattered most. Disappointing for Cornell Hendricks to not finish with the trophy. But still, it was just wonderful to see him back on the field. And he will certainly have given the, be, given the players that he's played with over the last two days a lot of confidence and a lot of insights as well, just giving them a few little inside tricks. Yeah, just looking at this Kenyan side, they really have become a powerhouse of Sevens Rugby. And just to think that they've beaten the likes of New Zealand and you know England over time they've really put in a lot into their seventh game and you can just see this was a not their strongest side that they sent here but I mean just the quality and the execution that they showed at this tournament it's very impressive and it's I think that's one of the good things about some of the aspiring teams like Botswana and Lesotho for them to look at this Kenyan side and just see that it is possible you know, I was speaking to the, the Kenyan um, manager and he was indicating that uh, the Zimbabwe team used to beat this Kenyan side by 80 points and sevens. And if you look at the development now, it's quite remarkable. Yeah, they really have become one of those teams that on the day they have the ability to beat anybody. As you mentioned, they've managed to beat New Zealand in the past. They've managed to win tournaments and really they have that x factor and they are able to turn it on on the day and it's also great to see how much even a tournament like this means to them they usually play on the world's biggest stages here they're playing in africa and the victory means almost the same to them so just confirmation of the results from today in the semi-finals the bulls beat botswana tissan victorious over namibia the upset of the tournament for me a very very good victory for them and then in the other semi-finals the cup semi-finals kenya and the sa select side victorious and that ultimately saw them book their spot in the final of the cup which we had just witnessed Zambia disappointing to finish ninth in the tournament uh, a good way for them to end but really disappointing from them in the rest of the competition Namibia finishing in seventh place the Bulls winning the trophy final the Namibia Academy side scoring a late try to beat Dukla in that third fourth place playoff but the one where it mattered most Kenya delivered the goods on the day and they picked up a 19-12 victory over the SA Select side to win the cup final here at the Safland Men's Sevens in 2017 in Swakop. Yeah, the key result for me there would be Namibia against Botswana. It was rather disappointing for the Namibian team. So we're going to head down to the field now to a very dashing looking Dirk Fulian. 
Welcome to the post-tournament presentation for the 2017 edition of the Safland Sevens here in Swakopmund, Namibia. Before we acknowledge and award our teams, I'd like to introduce my guests. On my immediate left, Mr. Kali van der Merwe, the CEO of Safland Property Group. Next to him, Mr. Willem Strauss, tournament organizer, and Anna Marx on the far side from Quesse Sports Executive. Thank you very much for joining me. Our first award, the trophy award to be collected from Anna Marx, the Quesse Sports Executive, for their 26 12 victory over Tusan, the Bulls. A couple of players from the Bulls to mention. Uh, surprise, Matsubela played in the number nine jersey for them throughout the tournament. He really was exceptional. But also, their two big men up front, Chris Eberson and Albert Bucket, they really showed that they aren't just big physical players. They've got a lot of speed as well. And I think they caught a number of defenders. Uh, he surprised, they surprised a number of defenders just because they were able to really crack on the pace. Yeah, I was impressed with Makari as well. He was in the midfield and created a lot of play in there. For a team that won the provincial tournament, I think it's good for them to be part of a tournament like this, just to experience what the international level is about. We're going to head back down to Dirk now for the rest of the post-match presentation. Congratulations to the Bulls for their victory and the trophy winners. Our next award is the Bronze Cup. To collect their award from Willem Strauss, our tournament organizer, and for their 21-17 victory over Dukla Czech Republic, Namibia Academy. The Namibia Academy side causing a few surprises to get into that third, fourth place playoff. And then in the end, they scored a last minute try to beat the Dukla side from the Czech Republic. And also just a few players there that stood out for me in this competition. Klitter was simply exceptional in the number nine jersey. And as you mentioned there, coach player as well. He really did well to lift his team spirits towards the end. Yeah, and that were a pleasant surprise because obviously we're expecting the main Namibian team to be uh, collecting this trophy but um, they say that within disappointment there's also you know achievements to come out and uh, there could be one or two players that could step into that Namibian team from this it sure means a lot to those players in the field as well let's head back down to Dirk on the field congratulations to the Namibia Academy for winning the Bronze Cup. Finally, unfortunately, someone has to come second in these kind of tournaments. And what a great final we had, SA Select up against Kenya. And ladies and gentlemen, the champions for the 2017 edition of the Safland Sevens for their 1912 victory over SA Select, Kenya. Very, very well-deserved victory for Kenya. Last year, they had to finish up as the runners-up. But on this occasion, they've managed to set things straight. And also, one of the standout players for me, not just in this Kenyan side, but in the tournament, Nelson Oyu. He spent a lot of time on the wings. And as every time he got the ball, you just thought that something was going to happen. William, congratulations, you guys. Uh, it was a year ago when you were at this tournament, went down to South Africa, but this time you lift the Safland Sevens uh, trophy and great preparation for Kenya as you now enter the main circuit. Yeah, I think um, uh, the boys did a good job in this, uh, in this tournament. Um, we've been working hard and uh, we, we, we're happy for the results that we've gotten uh, from uh, Namibia. How important is this tournament? Kenya, a core status uh, team, now they're here playing on the African circuit. Obviously, the other teams look up to Kenya. They all want to be like you. How is it important is it for Kenya to be here, not only for yourselves, but for the other teams? 
Um, I think it's, um, it's good for other teams as well because um, we're trying to improve uh, Sevens Rugby in Africa. So um, these kind of tournaments are quite good for other countries to get better. Yeah. You've obviously got core status coming up. Is that the next big focus for you guys or a little bit of a run around before you go to Dubai? Um, I think um, it's one step at a time. Um, before the circuit, we have to uh, polish up a few things and uh, get better as we go by. Well, William, I'm not going to keep you any longer. Congratulations to you and your team. You can collect your trophy from Mr. Kali van der Marwe, the CEO of Safland Property Group. And go and join your team. Ladies and gentlemen, the champions of the 2017 Safland Sevens, Kenya. Wonderful celebrations for the Kenyan side. What a marvelous two days of rugby it has been here in Swakopmund. And in the end, Kenya, probably the best team on paper. And they have, are the well-deserved winners as well. I'm sure they'll enjoy the celebration for the next night. And then uh, it's all back to the drawing board as they head into the seven series that's coming up in Dubai. Yes, and deserve the champions they are. They've been excellent in this tournament, and it's uh, been a joy to watch. So make sure that next year you join Quezzo Sports for all the sevens action on the African continent. It's been a wonderful year of sevens. It's been a wonderful two days of sevens here in Swakopmund. But from everybody here at Quezzo Sports, it's goodbye.